so I've got a new document. Uh, the easiest way to start using this, of course, is with the with the brush tool. Now, if you've never used one of these pens before, the uh, confusing part is that the the hardware itself is kind of like mapped one to one with your screen. That is, if you touch the top left corner of the tablet, that should go to the top left corner of your screen right away. Whereas on the mouse, wherever you move your mouse, if I move it different locations, it stays at that point until I move. The pen tablet, if I put my tip of the pen on the top right corner, it's at the top right corner. So that little grid there, that little highlighted um, square rectangle, that's your screen. So one thing to get used to is wherever your hand is on this tablet is where you will appear on screen. So wherever you move that around, I'm not actually touching it yet, even just putting my hand on it. When I draw, I always have my hand on the surface. And so even just putting my hand on the surface like this and the pen close to it will let me follow. I'm not touching it yet. So I'm moving my hand around and it, and it follows me. Then I can tap to select the tool. Tap one time to select the tool. And then of course tap and hold and draw like a real pencil. Yes, there is. Uh, Angela will come back in a moment, I hope, and help with that. But uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Did you just say Alright, so the brush tool. Uh, if I activate the brush tool, uh, I'll be able to draw with that more naturally, like a regular pencil. Uh, you've got two buttons. If I'm holding the pen vertically, there's a button at the bottom, this button at the top. So those buttons right there are like mouse clicks. The one at the bottom is a right click. So if I need to right click, I can tap the bottom button of the pen near the, near the surface and uh, I get a right click. So if I ever need to pull up right click, there it is. If I need to double click, it's the top button. And if you don't have practice with this, eventually you'll, you'll figure out what works best for you. You know, when I'm drawing, my hand is something like this, and then I can easily go over to one of these buttons with my pointing finger. Uh, so if you practice with that. The eraser at the top, if you flip this over, this is an eraser. So if you draw a little bit, you flip it over, you've got an eraser. Tap and hold and it erases. So the big draw of this, pun intended, is that you can uh, do pressure sensitivity. Right now it's not uh, doing any pressure sensitivity. The line that I draw is basically the line that appears. Well, with a regular pencil, I can press harder. With a brush, I have different things I could do in the real world. To get pressure sensitivity with this tool, you have these buttons. Remember, mine is on a two-column layout here. If you want two columns, just stretch your edge out here. You've got a single column. Brush tool, and you have two option that you want to turn on. One looks like a little pen wiggling around here maybe with arrows. Turn that one on and that'll give you some of the pressure sensitivity but then you also want this one with like a pencil and a target. Turn that one on. So basically both of these use pressure and use tilt. So now depending on how you've tilted your hand and pressed, you'll get pressure sensitivity. I would increase the size of my brush also. Keyboard shortcut is the square brackets on your keyboard. Um, next to the letter P, next to the backslash, you've got left square bracket, right square bracket. 
it's a way to increase decrease your size and then if I press slightly I get a little line if I press harder I get a thicker line and as I increase the size of my brush I get different sizes so if your tip still looks a little thin first uh, increase the size of the brush overall change its number under the options here or a quick way again is the square brackets see every time I press it it increases a little bit there maybe I'll put it on size 25 for a moment and then as I draw here lighter or harder I get different sizes do you remember how to turn it to left-handed and right-handed yeah in the, there's a uh, uh, student right in the corner he's asking for that. okay we'll help you in just one moment uh, let's First come, first serve. Left-handed, right-handed. The cool thing about these is they can be turned left-handed and right-handed. So does anyone, does anyone need uh, left-handed instructions? Okay, uh, Angie will help. Angie will help in just one moment. All right, so with this tool, if you have the experience of drawing, this could work a lot better for you. If you don't, it's going to be a little, uh, a little confusing. So here's what I want to do. Even with the brush tool, uh, there's still a few more things in, in Animate that are very interesting to learn. So let's try this for a moment. We're going to draw a basic faces. Let's try like this. So first, some sort of circular shape. Circular, oval, doesn't matter. Then we're going to draw a vertical and horizontal line across it. Now this is not going to be a drawing class. Uh, we have many of those in the art department. But let's draw some uh, basic faces here. Uh, so a circle, vertical line in the center, horizontal line in the center. So the vertical line is going to be the line where like the center of the face is, like my nose. I'm bisecting this circle right in the middle for my nose. Then horizontally is where I'm putting my eyes. So across there are some eyes. I'm going to put a line somewhere there and a line somewhere there. That'll be for the nose and the mouth. I'm going to draw some eyes, some nose, some mouth. Just something super basic. Very basic face, eyebrows. Before I go further, I'm using those lines to help guide me where my eyes are going to be in general, the nose, etc. But those lines are in my way. Well, I have the eraser that I can then flip over and start to erase. Now, before we get too far in erasing, this is going to take a while. I'm going to need to erase all of this and all of this and all of this. The eraser is very cool, okay. but I'm going to show you that instead, because of the nature of animate, we have some different ways to work with this. You may have discovered this on your own, lines that overlap, merge, or lines that are different colors can cut. I'm going to switch over to the to the move tool temporarily, the select tool. Anybody else needed help with the left hand? No? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to switch over to the select tool. And I want to get rid of these vertical and horizontal lines. One thing that we can do is as you get close to the edge of a shape, you get the icon that lets you manipulate it. And if you click and drag, you know, to the left, that stretches out, okay? But if you click and drag to the right and instead cover itself, it disappears itself. So we'll see if you pull out of the shape, you're going to manipulate the line in a certain way. If you pull into the shape, you manipulate it another way. What I'm getting at here is one way to also start to clean up these lines is to overlap 
these lines on top of themselves. And I've cleaned up that top line. I could have used the eraser to do that. I think that takes way too long. This one weird trick of overlapping these lines can let you do this. So I'm going to try this horizontal one. If I start from the top edge and drag it upward, obviously then the line gets bigger there. But if I instead drag downward and overlap it, it cuts it. And I think on this example, I'm going to turn off the snap, the magnet. I think it's not going to help me too much. So if I pull that on top of itself, it disappears. Zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to pull over this edge, something like that. You get a preview of where it's going to go before you let it go. So if you hover over it, something like that, I've cut out that piece. This is not the only way, of course, to draw this. I could draw the basic shape in its own layer. And then on another layer, I could draw the details. I want to show it this way, however, because it can be very useful. So again, dragging over an existing line, pulling it really far out here. It looks very odd. When I let go, it goes away. This, of course, is going to take practice if you've never done this before. and. Uh, it's a very odd way to draw, but for myself, once you get the practice, this can actually go a lot faster. For example, here, I uh, there must be a name for this method, but you know, I, I overlap my line, my line here on the nose, over here on the eye, over here on this eye. Well, now that this is a separate shape, I can just select it and delete it. So I just needed to overlap the shapes enough to create an independent shape that T in the center there, I click to select, and then I delete on the keyboard, and that whole shape is gone. It'll be a little bit trickier here how I did this nose in this case, but again, these shapes, I can pull them out and overlap them, and wherever they overlap, they cut. So that nose, a moment ago, it was kind of jumbled up. I drew my lines too thick. Well, I pulled out an edge up here to create a, an empty area. I pulled an edge up here and an edge down here. And now that's an independent shape right in the middle, which I can select and delete. So the mechanics of it are rather easy to teach, but how do you use it and how do you apply it yourself? That's the harder part. You need the practice. I'm cleaning it up this way. And you may be able to draw something right off the bat really nice. I envy that. But if you're not able to, if you need to do guides and such, here's one way to do it. You draw your basic shapes, your basic lines. Then you start to overlap the shapes to fill in the colors. I'm not done yet on this. I haven't saved at all. Also, we should have been saving. But uh, this is what I've got so far. You saw a little while ago I had these basic lines uh, overlapping, and I'm starting to clean it up. I'm going to save this. I'll put today's date on it. This is our practice. 2017-02-13, Monday the 13th, which I think is much more unlucky than Friday the 13th. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this onto my flash drive. So again, it's not a drawing class, but try to draw something, you know, basic face. You can get fancy and do hair and all that cool stuff, but just try to draw some kind of face the way we just looked at overlapping shapes. And we'll talk about colorization. People were asking last time, how do I do cool gradients? And how do I do you know, faded colors and all of that? That's one of the things we'll talk about today. But first, let's draw some sort of basic face. And 
then we'll see how to colorize it nicely. So I like this technique, but sometimes, yes, I do need to then get the eraser tool and clean up a few pieces. And I do recommend try this technique. Um, don't rely on the eraser just yet. Also start to memorize those keyboard shortcuts because if I've got the pen, which is a great way to draw, I'm probably going to have my hand near the keyboard. If I quickly need to go back to the brush tool, I can press B on the keyboard and I'm back to the brush. If I need to get the select tool, there's V to select and I've got the select tool. When I'm zoomed in here, if I want to scroll around quickly, what's the keyboard shortcut to be able to scroll my screen around? Spacebar. Remember, you can hold the spacebar, you get the hand temporarily, and then you can click and drag to scroll around. So I'm still with my select tool, for example, and then I need to scroll around. I hold space for a moment and scroll around. Let's try that for a moment. Try to draw some face. Then we'll talk about coloring. Some face or some character. So drawing with the brush tool is a very freeform way. I really like it. But then sometimes there are these little imperfections that I want to eliminate. In my case, I drew the nose. Um, it looks OK, but it, I, my hand maybe wiggled a little bit. And there's a couple of other little things that maybe I want to smooth out. Uh, we're going to uh, make a copy of this layer and then further alter this graphic. So whatever you've drawn at the moment, lock the layer. Uh, we can call this face one. I'm going to lock the layer. I'm done with it for the moment. Uh, then you want to right click the layer and select duplicate layer. Call it face two. And then also turn your face one into a guide and hide it. So I drew my original face. I locked it. I hid it. I turned it into a guide. Right click to turn into a guide. We've got then a copy of face two on layer two, which I'll unlock. I want to leave alone a copy of what I drew a moment ago and then show you that we are able to then smooth out our lines. I like overall what it looks like, but I think there's a few lines in there that could be smoother. Because this is all mathematically derived behind the scenes, there's equations that are governing that nose or the cheek or the eye and such. There's just equations there. So 
uh, animate will let you smooth out or alter the equation uh, to get an appearance of smoothness. I want to select the whole drawing and one way to do that quickly is if you click on the on the um, frame I'm on frame one of my face two layer if you click the frame it selects everything that's like doing a control A or that's like making a selection with the select tool of course with the select tool you have to make sure you select everything I didn't select the one edge there so just click on the frame of your new face layer. The shape is selected. If you click on it, I clicked on the frame, and then I, I clicked on the shape. I see the options of the shape, so I can easily change its color and other things. And then there's two options down on the bottom tools here the snap, a little S, and like uh, right angles. That little S is smooth. It'll take what you've drawn, and every time you click it, will smooth the lines out a little bit. If I click it once, I saw some of those curves getting smoother. I click it again, smoother. Obviously, I can go over the top, and at a certain point, too smooth. It's actually kind of erasing my lines. But if I needed these lines that were smooth and I didn't quite smooth them, I can hit it with one or two clicks of that smooth, and I think it looks nicer. That's too far. I'm going to take that back. But that's where I started. Smooth it once, maybe twice. smooth this mouth out for me really nice. It was kind of jumbled up a bit, but it came out nice. This eye is still not perfect. It's still kind of not so smooth as I would like. I like that eyebrow. That one's okay. Well, I can just select that eye itself. I can make a selection only of that eye and only smooth that eye. I did the whole shape a moment ago. If I only click one shape, that eye is one separate unit. It's not touching. That blue eye is not touching that blue eyebrow or that blue head. So it's not connected. I click once with the select tool. It's selected. And I can see well what it'll look like, what will it look like as I start smoothing it. Smoothening it. can still go in and and do a little bit of pushing and pulling this nose is getting too square I could redraw the nose I could keep adding to it whatever I've currently drawn I can change it a little bit Try that for a moment. Do a little drawing on it, maybe select pieces and smooth it. That may be something that you find that's very useful. The opposite is the straighten. I hardly use that, but that might be useful sometimes. That's going to take what you've drawn and go with the opposite. Let's see what it looks like for mine. Straighten. If I click that, oh, I made the, the head a perfect circle. That's interesting. But then the face, the mouth, now the mouth looks totally different, and that eye is weird. But from there to there, that's very interesting. You never quite know what you're going to get out of this. So maybe what I could do is only select the outside shape, and then smooth that, and I have a perfect circle. I might as well have drawn a circle, but here straightened from my from my oval into something really straight I'll give you about one minute to try to draw something and then um, you know maybe refine it just a little bit then we'll see about 
uh, colorizing this. We'll see various nuances of how to colorize. Just take a moment to draw something. So Kyle, when, when you can, we've got a tablet for you right here. Yeah, just bring up your um, uh, photo ID. So if you've never used this tool before, raise your hand one more time. How many of you have never used a pen tablet before? OK, cool. How do you guys like it? All right, so let's say you've drawn something. Let's talk about colorization. Um, I did it really simple. I didn't put any hair or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I want to color the face. Uh, let's say I'm going to get some, I'm going to get the paint bucket. So switch to the paint bucket. I was drawing with blue. Uh, well, maybe the first thing I want to do is I was drawing with a blue edge. Maybe I, I want to turn that over to black or some other color. I can do this basically at any point. These brush strokes are technically fills. They're inside shapes. And when they're any color, every other color is separate. We saw that when you overlap lines of different colors. So I can turn these lines to a certain color right now or later. I'll, I'll do it later. Let's say I want to, let's say I forgot. So. I want to start to fill in some colors. Skin tone first, maybe. Let's see what kind of colors I have here. I've got a bunch of colors. If I don't have the perfect color, I have a color mixer right here. Let's try this. Let's get the paint bucket. Click on the color bucket there, the fill color. And then switch here to the um, color mixer, that color wheel on the top right corner. get a color mixer. I can go to these different areas, go in to find these colors. We have lots of ways to mix these colors. I, it looks like the default we have the R color, red, green, blue. I moved my R somewhere up here, and then moved it around somewhere over here, and I'm trying to get some kind of skin tone. Let's say I kind of went into the general color of the skin tone. In my case, it's these actual formulas. Every color can also be represented by a formula. Uh, and maybe I want to darken or lighten the skin tone. Well, we've got RGB. This is mixing red, green, blue. And we've got HSB. So RGB, red, green, blue. Has anyone heard of HSB before? HSB is hue, saturation, brightness. So if I switch to the B, I can then change the brightness of whatever color I've created. Saturation, the strength of the color. And hue is the color, basically. So maybe a better way to choose your colors here is to put it on H the hue. This will then give you a nice spectrum here from red through the whole spectrum where you might be able to go on to the general color first and then the bright version or dark version of the color. So I would recommend here on the color picker HSB selecting the H might be better. 
and you can go find a skin tone. So anywhere in there that looks good to you, we're going to just start with a basic tone color. Then we'll There's a swatch of, of pre-selected skin tones? I thought so. Because Photoshop has it, so I'm pretty sure they kind of brought it into the system. I don't think anime has it. Does it? No, it doesn't. Anime doesn't have a, a set swatch of swatches, thing like that. It's, mm. it's been a color picker for a long time. Oh, oh okay. So I'm going to choose a color. I'll click OK, and then drop it in with the paint bucket. Well, I touched it with the color and it filled it in. Well, what happens here is it goes into the pupils. Maybe I don't want the pupils to be colored as well. I could undo and try to fix that, but actually I'm going to move forward because I do want the whites of the eyes. And I can still add them even after I've drawn this. This again depends on what kind of style of art you're trying to do. I don't want the edges of the eyes. I don't want to draw the edges of the eyes like this. But I do want white eyes, the pupil, not the pupils, the, what are these whites called? The whites of the eyes. I want to draw the whites of the eyes, but I don't want the hard edge. What I could do is, back to my brush tool, with a fill color of white, I could start to draw where those pupils should be at. I'm going to decrease the size of my brush also. Maybe only 10. Something like this. I want this pupil, the white of the eye, to extend this far out. I've just separated the shapes. There's a blue at the top, there's white at the bottom, and in the center is the skin tone. Well, that shape there now I can paint bucket and fill that in. I'll do that with the other eye. I don't want the, with that blue edge, but I do want to draw an eye. So with the brush tool on white, I'll draw where the eye extends. Obviously, I went over a little bit on my shape there. Kind of looks okay there. I don't like it there. That can further be fixed, or you can be aware of it at the beginning. Let's say for the eye, I'll start over here. So once I've separated that out, animate is all about these separate shapes, the separation of, of elements. It's a very fascinating way to draw compared to other programs. Now I filled it in. I'm going to fill in the, the eye. Instead of pure black, I start off with a dark black, dark gray, not pure black, so I can see it as I fill that in. So I've defined where the eyes are at. Fill in the lips. So I'm drawing, uh, I drew the mouth originally. I smoothed it. I'm kind of losing a little bit of the mouth internally. The outside thickness is a little too much. I can still further go in and push and pull these shapes like this. That mouth itself, I can select it. It's separate, and I can smooth that.
If I do a quick control enter to see it full screen like this, this is what I'm getting at this point. I'm going to fill in those colors. Now every time you do control enter it's going to pop up with that output warning which annoys me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that output panel out like that. So that output panel I'm just going to drag it and detach it and put it somewhere down there for, for me to forget about it. draw this let's say I want to do some a um, little bit of a basic cell shading that's a pretty popular way to uh, colorize something uh, basic cell shading well the the paradigm, the way of thinking of coloring in other uh, software is very different than what we can do here in Animate. For example, let's switch back to the brush tool. Let's say I want to define a little bit of the color of the face. I want to shade the face a little bit with the basic dark or light color. So. Let's say I want to put a darker area to this face. I'm also going to hide my timeline just because it's in my way. But let's say uh, I'm going to have very basic lighting. Left side of the face will be lighter. Right side will be darker. Let's say that the basic light source is on the left side over here. So light on the left, dark on the right. Like my hand right here, uh, the light part is the dark part left and right, very basic shading. So light and dark. And do some light and do some dark. I want to start with that color first. So I'm going to get the paint bucket. I'm going to select the color I started with. I'll go back to the paint bucket and go to the color mixer. I can then go to the brightness or uh, no, I'll keep it on hue. On hue, I can then... Oh, brightness, actually. The color that I picked, <clears throat> I want a darker version and a lighter version. So if I switch to the brightness slider, there's that color. I can slide up to a lighter version. I can slide down to a darker version. So let's say I'm going to slide that up to a lighter version at some point. Then I can start to kind of fill in a color over here before I go too far. I'm filling in a color. I'm filling it in. Great. Whoops, I'm also cutting away the shape, the line I had originally drawn. That's, that's standard. That's common for every software. What's uncommon with Animate is that I can do like a paint inside the lines. The default is with the brush tool, if I draw, if I paint, and if I go on top of a line that exists, it goes on top of it. That's obvious. But here are some extra special modes. Notice, brush mode. I'm on the brush tool. Brush mode. That icon there shows what you're about to draw will draw on top of what's already there. If I click and hold that, paint normal, paint fills, paint behind, paint selection, paint inside. If I go to paint fills and I start painting inside of the face and I go outside of it and let go, it's going to behave in different ways. If I go over to paint inside, this is one of my favorite ways. I start painting inside, I go outside, I let it go, it only stayed inside. So the default mode 
when you paint on top of things, it goes all over the place. If you do paint inside, wherever I start to paint, watch this, I'm going to start to paint on the face, I'm going to go all over the place over here, let it go, it only stayed inside of the color where I started to paint. You saw that I went over the eye and the pupil and the line, and I even went out here, but it only stayed inside where I started there. I'm going to do a, a David Bowie effect right here, see. And when I let it go, it's only the part where I started at. If I start, for example, on the eyebrow, only the eyebrow stays colored in. If I start inside of the pupil there, only the pupil. So I'm starting on the face and then trying to do some sort of you know coloring, something like that. Light side on the left, dark side on the right. There's some parts that I missed, of course. The, the thing with this mode is each piece of color is like a little island of color. It's separate. I'm missing, just to make it obvious here, I'm missing, um, you know, I, I didn't finish, I didn't finish coloring in a few pieces here. Well, if I start to color it in here, don't let go of my pen and go up here. It doesn't behave how I think. So if I start colorizing right here, fill that in, fill this in, fill this in, fill this in, fill this in, let it go. Well, it didn't fill in here because it's a separate shape. It's a separate fill. I colored in here, which is not connected to this. So when I let it go, it didn't color it. This mode just takes practice. We have paint behind. Sometimes this one is useful, paint behind. If I start to paint here, and then I let it go, well, it went behind the whole shape. I can get the same effect with layers. I prefer the layers, but this is something you can do as well. If you go to the paint behind mode, where you've started to paint, it'll go behind it. What else? Paint fills. Uh, I think that would only work if you've got uh, a shape that you've drawn with a stroke, maybe. And then paint selection. You have to make a selection first. If I selected a piece, and paint there. So I got the select tool. I made a selection first. I went to the then. Paint selects mode. I colored there, and it only stayed inside of that. It also colored the edge. That's a possibility. I'm kind of drawing a little bit there of the highlight of the character. That is an independent shape. Now that they all touch with the select tool, I can select only that highlighted part, highlights and shadows, and then I can smooth that.
Maybe this got too smooth. Well, that's a shape that I can further pull out like this. So all of these edges, all of these shapes, they're still manipulatable. All of this are independent pieces that you can further work with. Change color, smooth, straighten, push and pull, erase. And ultimately, all of that, if I click and select and drag that away, all of that is a separate piece. So that was, in the, that was originally part of the whole face. I selected it and moved it away, and it's separate. So with the shadow part, I need a darker version of the color. So I can start with the original skin tone and then start to colorize it darker. So I'll get the brush tool, paint bucket, and then extract the original color. So paint bucket, click to choose a color, extract, and then I can mix a darker color. Once I've picked the starting point color, I can go to the mixer. I'm on the B for brightness and pull that down. Something like that. I need, of course, a moment to refine it um, and then start to add other details. But as I um, as I work with it like this, I can start to to do something interesting. And then smooth out these shapes to get uh, better results. So try that for a moment. Lighter colors, darker colors, smooth it out a bit. Practice that for just a moment. If you're having any trouble, call us over. And it's a very different way to think about coloring, colorization and such. But try that. Remember everything that I'm doing here, I'm recording. I did send out an email about the recordings. So you don't even have to ask for them anymore. But you can go over to the recordings and see how to practice with this.
So here I've uh, started to draw something uh, shaded a little bit. We're going to do advanced shading with gradients and such a little later. Right here, some basic cell shading, cell cell shading style. This is one way to do it. I'll show a couple of other ways in a moment. Um, so I've got this version. I'm going to save that. Here's a here's another way that we can do the cell shading. A little while ago, remember we had we had a face one. We made this face two. I want to make a copy of face one again to make face three, so I can show you another way to to colorize. In my timeline, I'm gonna um, uh, lock face two. Right click face one. Duplicate. I'm then also going to uh, move that to the top. I'll call that face uh, three. I'm going to lock and hide face two and turn it into a guide. In phase three, I need to unlock it, unhide it, and unguide it. I'm going back to that version that I made a little while ago. I want to do the colorization again. So with a copy of phase one, I made it into phase three. I went back to it before I colorized it. So I'm going to fill in. Uh, colors again, but in a different way this time. I'll start with the basic. I'll start with the basic colors again. So I'm going to get the paint bucket. Start with a uh, skin tone again. difference here is we're then also going to employ strokes. Now we have fills and we have strokes. We have the fill which is the brush tool and we have the stroke which is the pencil. The pencil is also the line tool. So we have these outer shapes, these inner shapes so to speak. What I want to do is the cell shading again and all of that I want to do this eye, the way that the eye works. Uh, I can start with, a, with an oval tool. The trick here is to not use a fill. But I want to make the whites of the eyes again. And I want to make this curve below the eyes. That might be a circle or an oval. So with the oval tool selected, no fill, and then some stroke color, some size. What I can draw is some kind of circle there. If I select it, I can still move it. What I'm trying to do here is to show that if I put a circle, if I put a stroke where there is a, a brush, a fill, that cuts it as well. So if I have it selected and I kind of move it around, maybe with my arrow keys a moment somewhere there, I, I drew this circle. With that stroke and that stroke there, that created, that should have created a separate shape. 
with the white color. We can start filling that in. And notice it's bound by the stroke black color here by this brush blue color. And it's got filled in white. Well, that shape is still independent. And it cut it, but it won't leave a hole. So if I then double click to select that oval and move it over here, there's no hole there. There's no gap. The white was filled in perfectly circular like I wanted. And that shape has been moved over here. And I'll manipulate that shape into the right spot. Maybe with the arrow keys. Maybe redraw it. Maybe rotate it. And after those overlap, the stroke or the fill with different colors that overlaps, I fill in the color, and then I can double click, double click that oval shape. Just delete on the keyboard, and I have those whites of the eyes filled in. eyes have been filled in. I want to do something like that that I did a moment ago with the, uh, the light and the dark uh, coloring. And if we know this trick that strokes can cut shapes and don't leave a gap, we can do really interesting things like with the line tool. What I like to do is get the line tool, stroke one, fill nothing, of course. And then stroke color doesn't matter, but for me, it's obvious with red. I can use that straight line to start to divide up parts of the shapes. So if, for example, I do something like this, with the line tool, perfectly straight lines. I went over all of these fills. Those are now all separate. With the paint bucket, just to pick any color, I can then start to fill in colors. That's a shape. That's a shape. That's a shape. So whatever color, here it's bound up to this point. This obviously was connected a moment ago, but now with a stroke, it's not. And then I can double click a line to select it and delete it. Double click, select and delete. And there's no gap there. I filled in obviously a horrible color. That's not a real you know, skin tone color. But because it's a separate shape, I can select I can click once to select it, and with the paint bucket, go fill, fill in the perfect color. So what I'm trying to do again is a lighter version of the color. Select that piece, single click. Start with my base color, and then mix that darker. You get a preview. Those sh shapes are still separate. All of those shapes are still separate, and so here, those are straight lines. And I'm starting to curve it, light and dark. Later, we'll talk about, well, how do we blend this color into that color? That's what I want to know. We'll get to that next time. But here, we're doing basic cell shading. 
let's say for the nose here, well, line tool, maybe draw something like this, like this, like this. And drawing these shapes and overlapping them. Paint bucket. Double click to select all of those touching lines, same color, De delete, it's gone. Let me do that again. This is again a, a completely different way of, of thinking. But I want to colorize the nose. So with the line tool, we can do this of course with many different tools. But with the line tool, start to draw some shapes so those shapes that that shape that I made it's not a shape yet uh, it's got these edges this stroke inside is, is a separate shape now. Now that they've been separated with strokes, it's a different entity. Paint bucket, get the dark color, fill it in. And then if I click once on the stroke, it selects one piece of the stroke. If I double click all the stroke, it selects everything, and then I can delete. I could then go in and push and pull these if I want some curves <coughs> sometimes you need to zoom in to see the details or to manipulate the details Try this method for a moment. The line tool lets you cut shapes and you can fill in those shapes with color, flat color for the moment.
stories. It just points out the existence. Just for a little bit more practice, on my particular one, I had drawn something like this, but I never finished maybe the hair. I can keep drawing on this layer to add hair, or I can make a new layer for hair. I can merge those layers if I want also. Let's say in my case, I drew a face, face three. I want to make a new layer. I'm going to call it hair three simply because I've got a face three, I'll make a new layer, brand new layer called hair three. So on the bottom left corner, you can click new layer. I'm gonna call that hair three. And then also, I have a folder to group these elements. Because maybe I wanna go back and draw a different kind of hair two, and a different kind of hair one. So if I make a layer, maybe I'll call that um, person three. And I'll put hair three, I'll drag hair three into the folder. You see that line appears there. And then I'll drag face three. So face three, hair three are part of one group, one element called person three. That can be opened and closed. And that can be hidden and locked quickly. I'm going to lock face three. I, I don't want to draw the hair on the face layer see my organization here, I can get more complex. Face layer, hair layer, all of that is in a folder. Person three. So in that new layer, I'm going to try to draw some hair. Now, as you're drawing with this pen tool, me, personally, when I draw with real paper, if I have the paper straight ahead of me like this, oftentimes I'm drawing at a certain point and then I tilt the paper a little bit. The natural curve of my hand makes me curve my, or twist my paper a little bit. We can do that in Animate as well. We can twist the paper, so to speak, for a moment. So right here, you know, I'm drawing straight ahead, but then I need to twist the paper. We can twist the paper also in Animate. If you get the Hand tool, if you switch to the Hand tool, you have also the Rotation tool. H for the Hand tool, or space, but with the Rotation tool. That rotates the paper, the, the canvas, the stage. It doesn't actually rotate what you drew inside of it. Uh, it's just temporarily visually so with the rotate tool rotation tool and then I click and drag I'm rotating it to some point where it might work better for the natural curve of my hand so what that tool is simply to rotate it doesn't actually rotate the actual pixel pixels of the file this rotates it just visually if you then want to put it back how it was, the option at the very top here, center stage, that'll put it back flat. So that puts it back like that. So I'm not going to use the rotation. Um, you may you may use it. You may like it. Uh, that's how you do it. The the rotation tool hidden inside of the hand. You can press H to switch between them regular hand just scrolls around the hand with rotation rotates it and to put it back to normal you just hit the center center icon center stage my point there is that I want to then draw the hair and maybe uh, I want to rotate things a certain way
because I'm on a brand new layer, I will put the paint normal. Paint normal mode. I want to go back to paint normal. I'm on a brand new layer. There aren't any fills yet. So something like that to start to draw some hair. I can, of course, refine it as time goes on. It's very open-ended. I'm thinking about it in terms of uh, it's, a, it's a real kind of object, head, skull, and so forth. But I have to think about it also in terms of layers. That's what I've drawn so far. If I, stri if I try to fill in those colors, uh, I, have, I don't have closed shapes. I think I have closed shapes because I'm looking also at that. And it looks like I've got closed shapes right here and such. But because it's on a separate layer, they're not closed shapes. And in this case, I have some parts of the hair that are actually behind the skull. So if I start to fill in with those colors, at this point, this hair would be at the wrong spot. So I just need to think about how I need to fill all of this in. So I'm drawing a little bit of hair. Maybe I'll hide the face. I might need to go in and pull some of these elements so that they do touch. And so I'll pull these. Instead of completely hiding it, remember I can also activate outlines. So if you click on the color of the layer for outlines, So once these shapes touch, they're closed, then I can fill in colors. What I could also do here in this case, this is pretty interesting. I have this top part of the hair. Maybe I don't actually want to close that tuft of hair. I could switch over to the line tool, choose some color. connect it this way so this line now is used to close and brush tool here and close it So if I fill that in now, there is a closed shape there. That stroke is working to close the shape, which then I can just double click the stroke, delete it. That's just aesthetics. Did I want it closed? Did I want it fully drawn in? Did I want it uh, open? I think these curves of the hair are looking pretty good, except for this part over here. I can click and drag to select that part and then smooth that. I've been using the basic uh, selection tool but we've also got the lasso tool like other software where I can drag a shape selection around only the piece I'm trying to target and then smooth that out. up here make a selection smoothen it out this hair how I drew here I made a I, I kind of made a loop there I don't I didn't actually want that I only wanted this inner part I wanted 
to go something like this, then this, but I went too far. So if I overlap my lines, that'll cut, or I get the eraser. But if I overlap the lines, that often makes sharper edges. Maybe that's the style you're going for. So if I overlap these lines, something like this, that was a better edge than I might have been able to draw via the eraser. Here, it's not going to work. I want to fill in this color and this color, but this layer is on top of the face. If I could try to kind of go around the edges, it may just be easier for me to draw it on a separate layer. So the way I will do it, I will do it on a separate layer. I'm going to remove those lines. So I'll cut those out. I'll just delete those. I'm only starting with the top of the head, top of the hair. The front of the hair, actually. I'll make a new layer. Hair three back. Technically, hair three front, hair three back. And so now I've got a topmost layer, a middle layer of the head, and then a back layer of the other part of the hair. And because it's behind it all, I can, I don't have to be very careful about how it looks like where I overlapped it because it's behind. Which I then need to make sure it's closed because once I hide that, well, that was never closed. Now when I've got these different ones, it all looks complete, but it's separate, separate shapes, separate layers. To add the shading, I would have the same sort of idea. Very basic shading, left and right, left side, light and right side dark if you don't if you're not going to do it, deal with complex shading i would divide up these shapes of the hair into a light shape into a dark shape uh, i could use the actual uh, pencil we were use i use the line tool over here and i curved it the pencil tool itself it serves the same purpose the pencil and the line are strokes. They're the colors on the outside. And the brush tool is the fill. So with any color, then I can figure out something like this. So there's some shape. Oops, I have to be on the right layer. Hair three. So I divided up the, the shape here. I just drew it freehand with the pencil. Uh, be careful if it's not drawing properly. Change your mode to smooth. Cut that part out, and that can be a highlight, a lighter part. Cut out a part over here for darker. And this, of course, takes practice about where am I going to cut it out at. But the point of that is to separate the separate the um, the shapes.
because I'm working with separate layers, again, I thought, well, I'm going to cut the shape right here, but that actually is in a different layer. And that color on the projector is not obvious enough. On my screen, it's pretty obvious that's a different color. On the projector, not so much. more practice with this on the next time uh, as I wrap this up I've drawn these cut out areas to then start to do highlights and shadows they're all separate pieces the the thing you can do with animate is that if you uh, have those connected if I have all of them connected like this I can double click anywhere on that line and since it's all the same color line it's selected everywhere and once you delete there's no gaps so as a very first sort of practice with this concept of coloring with animate this is fine we're gonna end the main lecture and then have some lab time and then we're gonna do another related lesson next time and then a homework based on this kind of colorization so any general questions on on the things we talked about today really it's gonna be about the practice review this video I'm gonna upload it in a moment watch it again if you missed anything ask us so I'm going to turn the printer back on in just a moment if you haven't printed out your homework. But we'll have lab time until 1. And then we will continue this kind of uh, drawing and colorization next time with a, with a real homework assignment.